Good morning, rooms 10 and 11. Here we go. It's math time. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to Tuesday. Um, man, it's Easter week. I'm super pumped that we get to celebrate Easter this week. Uh, super bummed that we probably won't be able to be hanging out with our families the way we normally do, but hey, we'll work things out one way or another. God is good. I saw an awesome meme that was like, hey, churches are going to be empty on Easter Sunday, and it was like a picture of an empty church, you know? And then there was like a picture that said, and so is Jesus' tomb, and it was like empty tomb. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so I thought that was pretty awesome. I had to give that one a, a love, you know what I'm saying. I loved it. Um, sweet. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope you guys are staying healthy. As you can see up here on my TV, like I said, in our Bible lesson, I'm rocking this thing from home now, you know, because I know you guys don't want your teacher getting some coronavirus and, you know, being a diabetic and all, you know, it doesn't look good if I end up getting that stuff. So, I'm going to be teaching from here now. Uh, so, hopefully this works out okay. It'll, we'll give it a go and see what happens. Uh, but, yeah, so, I'm going to be running my iPad through the TV trying to do problems and examples with this up there. So hopefully everything works great. All right. So lesson 92, page 684 is where we're going to be picking up. Uh, I got some objectives, some plans for us, uh, things that need to be understood by the time we finish this lesson. Uh, one of those is basically just rounding mixed numbers. I feel like we've done this a little bit. Uh, so I think it's just us going over it again. Um, you know, we, we've covered this a little bit, but now we're going to be using those rounded numbers to find the area of a shape or find the perimeter of that shape. So we're going to round it and then either multiply it or round it, multiply it times two, and then add them together. Uh, talking about that perimeter. Um, so let's jump into this thing and we'll crank through this lesson. It's, it's really not that hard, so I think you guys are going to be great. So check out the new concept on page 684. The mixed number 7 and 3 quarters is between 7 and 8. Now to round 7 and 3 quarters to the nearest whole number, we, just, we have to decide whether or not 7 and 3 Let's try that over. 7 and 3 quarters is closer to 7 or is it closer to 8? So if we had a quick number line... So if we're here, here's seven, here's eight, here's seven and a half, and then if we put seven and three quarters on this number line, okay, so obviously looking at that picture right there, which one is it closer to, the seven or the eight? Someone yelled out nice and loud, bingo, it's eight, nice. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Uh, once you use that number line, you know, it's kind of like our, our normal rounding. If it's five or more, up the score. So let's think about it in a decimal sense. Uh, if we had these in decimals, this one's going to be 7.5, and this one's going to be 7.75, right? So three quarters is still like 75 cents, right? So if we have our decimal, if it's a five there in the tenths place, or bigger, a five, six, seven, eight, nine or whatever, then we're gonna jump it up to whatever the next number is. In this case, it was eight. So if this is a four, even if it's four, nine, 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 even if it's all those nines, but that that first tenths place was a four, then we're gonna drop it down to the next number, or we're gonna drop it down to that seven hole, or we're gonna take it down, so if I had 9.49999. Then I'm just going to drop it right down to 9. I'm not going to take it up to 10. I'm not going to drop it to 8. You don't want to drop it a whole number down further. You just drop it to the whole number out there on the front right there. So we just drop it right down there to that 7. Sweet. Let's look at example number 1. That was basically the lesson, you guys. So we're at example number 1 already. So... Example number one says, take six, ooh, I got crazy, let's try that over, six and two-fifths, and let's round that to the nearest whole number. Now let's look at that fraction, two over five. Let's think, what would half of five be? Go ahead and do it real quick in your mind. What's five divided by two? Uh, let's see, two goes into five two times, 
Okay, so yeah, that would be four, and then we drop the one, and we can drop a zero, put a decimal in there. So if we divide it like this, we would end up with 2.5, because half of five is two and a half, or 2.5. So do we have half of five up here, or is this fraction less than half? All right, give me a thumbs up if you think it's less than half. All right, give me a thumbs up if you think it is actually bigger than a half. All right, if you have your thumb up right now, you are wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, this, this would be less than one half of five because uh, half was this number right here. So if we're only here, it's not big enough. Now, if we had a three, sweet, we're going to round up. If we have a four, sweet, we're going to round it up. Um, but... Since we have less than half, what do I need to do with that number? Go ahead and say it with me. We need to round it down. So that six and two fifths is going to become six, just like that. Cool? I hope you're getting it. I'm getting it, so I hope you're getting it. Okay, cool. Example two, check out example two with me, everybody. So example two looks like this right here. It says, Kylie estimated the area of a triangle to be 20 inches cubed. Or no, squared, sorry, old eyes, old eyes right here. It's a two, it's cute, or squared. Ah. All right, here we go. Did Kylie make a reasonable estimate? Let's check this out. So, we go this way, we go that way, we go back up there. Now, she has eight and seven eighths inches by five. In a quarter inches. Now remember, we are talking about area. Who remembers how to find the area of a triangle? What do we got to do? You guys remember? Ah, uh, there you go. Go ahead and yell a little louder. Yes, it's base times height. So here's our base, here's our height, and then what's the next step? So base times height, and then we got to divide by something. What do we got to divide by? Two. Sweet. So we're going to go base times height divided by 2. But first, let's round these puppies. Now, 8 and 7 eighths, what am I going to round that to? Is that closer to 9 or is it closer to 8? Look at the fraction, 7 eighths. Uh, man, I feel like we're only like this much away from the number 9. So which way do you think we're going to round? Awesome, 9. So we're going to change this guy to a 9. I'm going to write him in red so he stands out a little different. Uh, now, five and a quarter. Remember, is a quarter less than a half? Yes, it is. So if it's less than a half, what are we going to do with that number? We're going to drop our own down. So instead of five and a quarter, we're going to drop it down to five. And remember, what we're looking to see is if 20 inches squared is reasonable down here in the corner. So let's, let's, let's work it out. Here we go. Um, so remember, we got our base times our height. So we're going to go 9 times 5. So it's 9, woo! 9 times 5. And what does 9 times 5 equal? Um, let's see. Sophia, Sophia, you paying attention right now? You better be paying attention. Here we go. Sophia, 9 times 5 is how much? Go ahead and yell it out. Make sure mom can hear you all the way down the hallway. Like, yell it out nice and loud. There you go. 45. Sweet. So we're going to put 45. But we cannot forget our next step. We still have to divide that 45 by 2. So let's go ahead and put a 2 underneath there. And then, let's see. 2 goes into 4 two times, right? And then that leaves us with 2 going into 5. It also goes in 2 times. Uh, and then our remainder would be 1. So that means if we work this out, that area would equal 22 and a half inches squared. Now, when we break it down, is this pretty close to that? Is that 22 and a half pretty close to 20? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty close. So we could easily say that Kylie made a good estimate on what the area was. Now, if we ended up with like 30, yeah, she didn't do a good job. 
If we ended up at 50, didn't do a good job. We end up at 10, didn't do a good job estimating. So 22 and a half versus 20, we'll give it to her. Sweet, let's go ahead and turn the page. All right, we're almost at a lesson practice start, you guys. All right, we're on page 686 and we're on example number three. Now, example number three, put a little E3 up here. Uh, it says we're estimating the perimeter of a rectangle or of a rectangular picture frame uh, that is 15 and 1 8 inches long and 10 and 3 quarter inches wide. So let's draw that up. So we got 10 and 3 quarters wide. And then how long it was, it told us was 15 and 1 8. All right, so notice how I wrote that division, that fraction symbol with, with the kind of like the little backslash right there, the 1 8. Um, on your guys' Google Classroom math test, that's what your fractions are going to have to look like just because there's no way to do them vertical like 1 over 8 down here, you know. Um, so you'll see it like that on the test. I try to explain it really well, typing the questions in there. Uh, we'll have one of those tests. Let's see. We got I3. I think the week we come back after Easter, we have a math test work in there. Um, so, be ready. All right, here we go. So, we got to round these guys to figure out the perimeter. Remember, the perimeter is just the distance around the outside of that shape. It's not the inside, that's area. So, perimeter. Now, let's do step number one. Step number one, we're supposed to estimate. So, 15 and 1 eighths. All right, let's think. What would half of 8 be? Go ahead and say it real nice and loud. It'd be 4. So 4 eighths is obviously, 1 eighths is obviously less than half of that fraction. So we just need to let that 15 rest. So 15 and 1 eighths, we're just going to leave it 15 inches. Now, 10 and 3 quarters, let's see, half would be 2 quarters. So obviously 3 quarters is bigger, right? You guys with me on that? So 10 and 3 quarters is bigger than a half, so we need to up that score. So we got to take it from 10 and 3 quarters, move that puppy up to 11, right? All right, sweet. So we got 11 inches. I'm going to cross off our original so we accidentally don't add those ones together. All right, let me pull this over here. Let's make this a little bit easier. No, don't lose. All right, there we go. Sweet. Still there. Okay, so... Now we're trying to find the perimeter, so we know that both sides are equal to their opposite side. Now we could just go around and add these up, or we could also do it this way. So we go 2 times 15 plus 2 times 11. All right, now 2 times 15, let me get this out of the way real quick. So 2 times 15 is 30. And then we know 2 times 11 is 22. Now, when I add 30 plus 22, that's going to give us how much? 52 inches. Um, and remember, that's the distance around the outside of the shape. Um, it's not the inside. Remember, inside's area. Sweet. All right, let's look at A, lesson practice. I mean, guys, this, got, this stuff's super easy. Uh, so if I have 3 and 2 thirds, now obviously let's look at 2 thirds. Is that bigger than a half? Yes, it is, because half of 3 would be 1.5. So 2 thirds being greater than a half, we got to jump that puppy up. So here we go. We jump it up to a 4. That's it. That's all it is. That's all it is. Don't, don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out. It's easy. All right, let's try C. We have 6 and 3 fifths. All right, we've already talked about what half of five is. Remember, it's 2.5 is half of five, or two and one half is half of five. Is three bigger than two and a half? Yes, it is. All right, so what are we going to do about seven? Um, let's see. Um, who could answer for me? Ooh, let's see, let's see. Hmm. Mm, Sophia. Arante. We'll switch up Sophia's. We're going to go back to back Sophia's. Here we go. So, Sophia Arante. Go ahead and yell it out nice and loud. 
So if three fifths is bigger than a half, so that means we've got to up the score. So we're going to take that six to a what? Mm-hmm. There it is. A seven. We're going to take that six and three fifths and make it a seven. Awesome. You guys are rocking it. Uh, let's go ahead and do E. So we got 12 and 5, 6. Now look at 5, 6, guys. That's only one sixth away from being 6 over 6. 6 over 6 would be 1. We'd make it 13 right away, right? If I had 12 and 6, 6 is 13, it, you know, it's easy. You just take it right there. So we're only one sixth away. Do you think we should round up? Yes, absolutely. So we're going to round that puppy up right up to 13. Uh, ooh, check out G. So we got a product going on here. Uh, so let's jump to G. Change colors here. So it says, what is the product of nine and four fifths and five and one third? Now, product. Uh, who can remember? Who can tell me what a product is? Um, let's see. Uh, Caleb. Caleb, tell me, man, if it's asking for the product, what are we going to do, bro? Tell me. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's right. We are going to multiply. But they want us to estimate before we multiply. So, Caleb, nine and four fifths. We're one fifth away from it being ten. Do you think we should round up, son? Mm hmm. There you go. So, we're going to round nine and four fifths, take it up to ten. Now we got five and one third. All right, so if we drew out that one-third, so here we go. And we shade in the one-third. Is that a half or is that less than a half, Caleb? Exactly, man. That's less than a half. So that means we got to take that five in, or that five and one-thirds and round it down to, oh, she shifted on me. There we go. And take it to five, just like that. Now we multiply. What's ten, five, ten times five, bro? It's pretty easy, right? There you go. Hit it. 50. Nice job. Um, now, let's do I. I liked I. I looks back at example number three. So we got that rectangle, right? You guys remember we rounded those two? We rounded one of them to 15. And this other side, we rounded to 11. Now, I is asking us, what is the area of this shape? Now, remember, guys, area is just your length times your width. So we got 15 times 11. Now, 1 times 15, or 1 times 5, 5. 1 times 1, 1. Put our space holder in there. 1 times 5 is also 5. And 1 times 1 is 1. Now we add those guys up. That gives us 165. And then we were talking about inches, right? And since it's area, we got to do what to it? We got to square that puppy. We got to put our little exponent on there. So it would be 165 inches squared. Um, so not too bad. Not too bad, I don't think. Uh, let's see. What questions for the math homework we might need to go over? Now remember, if any of these you're struggling with, go ahead and hit the back button a couple times. Look over the question again. Uh, I've had a few questions where people are like, hey, I didn't really get this question from the homework. Um, now, I, I love it, I love it, I want it, give me those questions, that's perfect. But sometimes if you take literally 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and you jump back to whatever lesson it was, let's say it, it came from lesson 83. So you jump back to lesson 83, sometimes there's an example right there in the book of the exact problem you are trying to do. So jump back there, check that out, see if there's anything there. If there isn't anything there, then sweet. Go ahead, shoot that, that, that message off to me uh, in the classroom or an email and be like, Mr. Poole, I really don't get how to get, uh, how did we get 36 on that answer right there? And then I will love to take the time to uh, tell you either what page to find the answer on or walk you through how we got to 36 as being that answer. All right, so. Grab out your math sheet for your homework, and let's talk about a couple of these. Um, let's see. Ooh, number two. So on 2B, it says, how many faces are on that shape? Don't forget there's a face on the bottom. Mmm, that's a tricky one. And don't forget to label faces, because I'm pretty sure 
it should be labeled faces also. So this many faces. Cool. All right. Sweet. Let's look to the next page. So now we're looking at page 687. Um, I'm going to give you a quick hint on number three. So on number three, we have another horizontal bar graph where we are comparing the two sets of data from week two to week four. Now, you might want to do a little scribble line on your graph down here and start with 10. So you might want to go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So make sure you number all those from 10 to 17. Now, you're going to have your names over here. And then your bars are going to go like this. So you might have one blue, one red for that person. And then you got another blue one. And then you got another red one. So it's going to look something like this once you plug in the information. Now, the reason I gave it a little bit more space is because we got halves in between these spaces right here. So we got halves here, halves there. Uh, so we got to leave room for those. Now, let's look at, hmm, let's check out number seven. So number seven's got a shape that looks like this. Uh, we got this, let's see, it says K, L, M, N, J. Now, we need to be checking out these problems, and it's asking us, which one of these letter combinations is going to give us an obtuse angle? Is J and K obtuse? Is K and L obtuse? Is L M obtuse? Or is K to N to M obtuse? Which one of these makes obtuse angles? So that's a tricky one. Uh, number eight, you just gotta make sure you line up your decimal numbers in the right spot. If they're not in the right spot, then you'll get the problem wrong. Um, another one, real quick, check out number 11 with me, you guys. So on 11D, so 11D, we've got a problem that looks like this. We have 8.040, and we're trying to simplify these by getting the extra zeros out. Now, only one of these zeros can be taken away without changing the answer or changing the, the value of the number. So we gotta be careful not to take out this dude right here in the middle. That guy's got to stay there. Now this one on the end, sweet. Take that out. If we got a zero in the front or a zero in the back, take those off. We're totally good. If there's one in the middle, that one's got to stay. It's special. All right, let's keep on rolling. So let's see. Uh, ooh, number 17. Number 17, we got another one of those questions about the parameter of the shape. And each side is 31 and a half inches. Now, this 31 and a half, remember that. If it's five or more, up the score. So if we write it as a decimal, so 31.5 inches, let's look at that five. We got that five there, that means we got to up that score before we solve for our distance around the outside. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Let's go ahead and look to page 689. So the last couple questions we'll go over. Uh, remember, on number 25, on number 25, we have this 9 with a little 2 like that. Does that mean 9 times 2 or 9 times 9? All right, if you said 9 times 9, you got it right. Uh, so remember, we got to go 9 times 9, and then they're having us add that to the square root of 81. And remember, the square root of 81 is just what number times itself equals 81. Um, let's see. Ooh, 26 is kind of a biggie. you got to write out all the factors of 70 and 100 and find the common factors. And then use the greatest common factor to divide B, uh, 70 over 100. How would you reduce 70 over 100? Um, last but not least... Number 30, check out 30. My hint for 30 would be to go ahead and add a zero to 0.38. So 
So all the other numbers that you're trying to compare have three digits in the decimal place. 0.38 only has two. So go ahead and throw a zero on there and then that should help you find the answer for this one to put those in order. And they are asking for least to greatest. Uh, so make sure you get those going in the right direction. All right, uh, I hope this worked out okay for you guys. I know it's a little different than me being in front of the giant whiteboard at school, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. Remember, any questions, look back to the lesson. If you still can't figure it out, go ahead and shoot me that quick message or email in the Google Classroom or wherever, and I'll try to get back to you guys pretty quick. All right, talk to you soon.